Hello, bonjour tout le monde. Um, I will be doing my presentation on Galerie d'Art Louise et Ruben Cohen, and my name is Nisk Embo. I, uh, I work with two other people who are part-time um, employees of the gallery. So uh, there's a technician, Angèle Cormier, and our administrative assistant, uh, Nicole Leblanc. But I am the mo main person for this project. So uh, we started out uh, um, collaborating with the Musée Acadien, which is housed in our building. And um, we worked out a way that we can both do our own storage. Um, and also because I work for an art gallery and we like to do things differently, my <laughs> presentation and our project took some uh, different turns <laughs> along the way. So, um, Galerie d'Art Louise Rubin Cohen is, uh, is uh, at University of Moncton, has the unique mandate of collecting Acadian art. Today, its collection includes nearly 1,000 works of art a quarter of which are permanently exhibited in various buildings on the university's Moncton campus. The gallery's body of work may be modest in size, but it is rich in its importance to New Brunswick heritage, reflecting on the history of modern and contemporary art in the area with a particular focus on Acadian art. Uh, we are a public art gallery and our, our main activity are contemporary art exhibitions with artists who are still living. Um, um, so our collection is used, uh, as I said, on campus, but it's also used for sometimes for our exhibitions, but not so much. Our exhibitions are mainly comprised of works from <laughs> elsewhere. Uh, and like I said, we are... Uh, uh, one full-time staff and then uh, supported by two shared resources. And that's the building. Um, so here are just a few images of uh, items from our collection. Um, uh, this is uh, Mario Doucet. Uh, it's an uh, Acadian artist. It's one of our more recent purchases. Uh, this uh, piece here by Yvon Galland, who's a quite well-known Acadian artist, is uh, eight feet by 12, three panels of four feet, so 12 foot uh, painting. And this is part of a collection called the uh, Alombre d'Evangeline and there are 11 of pieces of that size in our collection. Uh, this last piece here is, I just uh, brought it up because it's uh, something that was produced uh, for an exhibition that I curated with uh, Gary Neal Kennedy on his photographic works. And he produced the work specially for the exhibition that we worked on. So our collection sometimes comprises of some of those items too, and I particularly like it because of having been able to work with Gary Kennedy and him having produced this work especially for us. Um, this is our exhibition spaces. So as you see, these are the types of exhibitions that we have, uh, very much uh, uh, varied types of exhibitions and uh, oftentimes not comprised of things from our collection. And we also do other activities which are performative or uh, public art based uh, activities such as this, which is part of a performance and public art intervention art festival. Um, this is the floor plan from the whole building. So over at the end there, that's the whole building that we share with the museum. If you cut a line diagonally, uh, this area that's green is our storage area, and the area just underneath is our exhibition spaces, and the rest is the museum. So uh, our facilities are smaller than our uh, sister institution. And this here is a blow up of the galleries and our storage. So this is the area that we have been working on. These are some drafts of our um, uh, storage before reorganization. Uh, this is a uh, compilation of works. The orange parts are artworks from our collection. The green are just objects. Uh, um, plinths and uh, t um, crates and those kinds of objects. And then the blue is some of our um, technical equipment, televisions and such that we use in our installation. So just to demonstrate a bit the mixed uh, 
uh, composition of um, the building is sound. Maybe I can, yeah, the building is sound and well maintained by University of Moncton maintenance staff and by its policies. Uh, the construction, uh, construction, heavy lifting, and other such services can be provided by the maintenance department, and this is an appreciated privilege that we have. Um, so. The, and our analysis of the storage uh, demonstrated that usage of space uh, could be optimized uh, and some space could be dedicated to other activity uh, for transit, for example, or research or packing or conservation or for storage, other storage needs. Uh, we have sufficient space for the existing collection, so that was an, a surprise because when we looked at our spaces before, it seemed overly full to us. But uh, when we started doing the calculations, we realized that we were at about 60% capacity, which is quite significant, which means that there is a space for more work. Um, the existing slotted shelves unit are not ideal. This is this type of uh, slotted shelf in the sense that they were constructed quite a while ago and they need to be uh, cleaned up and, and recovered. Um, but they are functional. And uh, one of the main uh, realizations was that some work cannot be placed into the existing furniture because of their size, and these need to be stored properly to free up access to existing storage furniture because we, the larger pieces are, they're not currently because I'll explain later, but they were uh, placed in front of our uh, furniture, which meant that access to things in the furniture was complicated. Uh, storage area contains many items related to exhibition, presentation, and transportation that are not part of the collection, uh, but there are no other available spaces for these items in our building. So because we have limited space within the building, we are planning to store some non-collection items in our storage while ensuring they remain separate by identifying a section to be used for this purpose. As some of our slotted shelving units are not filled, we also plan on using designated swing spaces for works in transition, either from our collection or not. So as I explained before, because our programming comprises mostly of works that are coming from elsewhere, uh, we do need a space to be able to accommodate those when they are in transition. So this is our, uh, our self-evaluation. Um, yeah, I, th I think it was done both by myself and the technician and then we compiled our notes and so this is the result. And it was odd, but sometimes we were very much not grading ourselves in the same way. <laughs> um, so a collections policy is in the final stages of approval. And, uh, we've been collecting for 50 years, but we've never had one before. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. An evaluation of the database documentation system is needed to determine if it is appropriate for our needs. And a cahier de charge, I'm not sure in English, I, I found collections book, should be compiled to group all existing and new procedures because my a technician and myself, when we arrived, we had almost no um, procedural manual for how the collection uh, functioned, and so we would like to put that together so that the next people come in would have something to work with. Um, oh, I think I've skipped the part. Anyway, a comprehensive inventory needed to be done. Proper storing of heavier and more voluminous work would need to be addressed. We need to set up um, identifying storage units. Uh, set up a more comprehensive and systematic procedure for tracking location of items, including identifying locations in the digital database. Now I come to where we started going off a little bit. Uh, before we registered with the e reorg program, um, we had decided that in our 50th year of the gallery's existence, it would be time to spend time with the collection because uh, it has not been the main focus of our activity. 
So we um, conceptualized of this project called l'inventaire or an inventory, which is larger than just the taking of the inventory. The staff we uh, are doing the inventory, but that well, that's being done while all the objects in the collection are being inventoried. Um, this is a larger initiative, giving the opportunity for artists, curators, researchers, and the public to explore the collection. So as you see here, it, the space has been dedicated for three months for this project to happen. And I know Simon keeps saying that you don't do that first, but we had already started doing that. So we're kind of trying to combine both and, and trying to work it out as best we can. So a workshop on artwork documentation uh, with a focus on lining, framing, and digital editing for accurate documentation. So I say accurate uh, documentation, not for publication purposes, <laughs> uh, using basic tools was offered. It was a free uh, workshop and we had to give it twice because it was so popular. Uh, the hope was that participants would subsequently contribute to the documentation of parts of the collection. Um, these, these, this is from the workshop and these are two of the researchers who have started their residencies with us. So collection-based research residencies by two art history researchers. Um, and three artists have been facilitated. This is two of the artists who have started on their work. This, she's finished. This is a piece that she produced based on a piece from our collection, which is a reproduction of a Miller Britton called Leaving the Clothing Depot. She has uh, produced a new piece, which is called L'Arrivée au Village, and uh, it's a piece on the fabric, a transfer, photo transfer on fabric. And this is the artist's work. And then the other side is the artist down there speaking with some people who are, because we're open, this project is open to the public, so visitors can come and see what we are doing, uh, the staff, as far as inventory. But they can also uh, meet and discuss with the researchers and see what their projects are all about. Um, each will be asked to present their research during a public forum at the end of the project, and that's on the evening of March 31st for those who are interested. It should be fun because uh, some, for some reason she decided to, she's, do, she's an artist who does um, painting mostly, but she's decided she's going to do a performance as well. And then the third artist, who I have here, She's going to be playing the, she's learning how to play the drums and she's going to be playing the drums. Somehow it's related to the collection, I'm not sure how, but we'll all find that out on the 30th. <laughs> um, uh, so to facilitate the inventory progress, process, sorry, we move most of the larger items out of the storage and into the gallery spaces. So that's the picture down here, and I'm sorry, the documentation's not very good. But you can see that this black line, this, that's our ceiling. Our ceilings are 11 feet. So some of these works are very tall. This one cannot be stood the other way. It's uh, more than 12 feet. Um, so that's uh, just a sample of the very large works that we're storing. Um, this enabled us to have a proper view of the size and number of such items, and we realized that the main physical space problem was the storing of these, and that our storage reorganization would have to tackle this problem. A specially constructed slotted racks designed to hold much larger pieces will need to be built. Some may also be hung on available wall spaces, either in the storage area or on rota rotation in the main lobby of the building. So we have maybe one or two areas where we can um, hang some of those works, but that's still to be determined. <clears throat> um, as for the large sculptural item, items, most of which are held in crates, uh, yes, this is uh, the in process, the working, and this is our uh, loading dock and uh, part of a, um, an area where we can build and construct. Right now, it's overwhelmed with all of the things that we've taken out of merci, excuse, taken out of the storage and uh, put there to either be uh, thrown out or placed elsewhere. Or anyway, there's a little bit of a, a limbo area right now that we need to kind of deal with. Um, 
Um, so for the large uh, sculptural things that are held in place, we'll need to construct platforms with casters that will permit us to move these around in the space as needed. The space is quite small, so we need to think of it in, that, in those terms. A large soft sculpture will, uh, that's made out of fabric will have to be supported from a net hung from the ceiling. And these items form the basis of our uh, PAM grant application. As we had to handle every object, we took this opportunity to place each in the most appropriate location. So some of the physical reorganization has already been achieved. We can now clearly see what percentage of some furniture is available. So if you see over there, that's just parts of those are, are used and there's lots of room for more. Uh, the inventory also permitted us to become more aware of the identification and location issues around the objects. We also discovered quite a lot of works with unknown provenance, a great number of which had not been entered into our registry. We are in the process of re-registering or registering those that we know were purchased or donated with the intent of adding them to the collection. Um, even if we don't have the relevant documentation. Other items of interest for the collection will be registered with a code indicating that their provenance and our ownership is unknown because we do program a lot of works coming from elsewhere. They might not ever have been intended for us. This exercise will also be a test of the web-based data registry to see if we can learn to use it and become more comfortable with its function. Um, after the workshop, we ha hope to have a clearer idea. After this workshop, so now, we hope to have a clearer idea, and I'm not sure of that, but we'll see, if our proposed slotted rack system is the best option and to better understand how the space we have can be maximized. So, and this is the last picture. This uh, side effect of this project is that the whole, uh, our technician has finally decided to personalize her space and make it more efficient for her to work in and maybe we can tackle my office next. <laughs>